Hello, one and all. This is Javier coming uh, at you live. Learn CNC with Javi. I am just doing some last minute uh, housekeeping, as it were. And I will be shortly with you. Let's wait a few uh, minutes until some people come in. Hey, Ali. I'm just checking to see if my voice comes across. And uh, Steve is with me as usual, watching the chat. I'm just yep. getting a few files ready. Let's see here. Yeah, my net, my voice goes out over the air. How's that possible? I don't know, but it come. But I I just heard myself say. Hmm, that's strange. Your voice shouldn't come out unless it's. I, I can't imagine that it's bleeding through my speaker. From my, I'm in. I'm in the headphones going to the. Uh, I mean, let me see a second. Uh, that is strange. Test again, Steve. See if your voice comes through. Hello, you've got seven, eight people watching now. Uh, we have a few people watching. Welcome, everyone. And uh, let a couple more people drift in while I set up some files here for today's show. And yes, my voice goes out. Uh, Steve, are you sure it's not coming out through your own uh, computer? I can't understand why it's not, why it's coming out through there. Unless, let me try the control panel. You've got Lyle, Lyle, Andrew Haig, Steve Misher, Eloy. Hey, Andrew, Lyle, Steve, Eloy, how's it going? Today we're going to do a simple... Uh, 3D. I don't know if it's simple or not. Uh, how's it going, Neil? Hey, Butch. Okay, let's see here. Uh, I guess let's begin. Let me do a quick. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. One more thing I wanted to do here, and that is and welcome one and all. I am uh, today. We're going to work on the following item. <laughs> yeah, coincidentally, Dave just got here. So, yes, now we can begin. <laughs> Funny, Dave. All right. So, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to do uh, this wonderful little logo here. And uh, as. Uh, as on most weeks, Steve is uh, reading the chat to me in case I miss anything. I'm looking at it as well, but uh, I miss an awful lot. Okay, why isn't this? There it is. Okay, for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, Aspire or Vectric or any of their products, all I did was uh, open up a new file and dragged. The easiest way is to drag it in. Just drag in any JPEG or any <clears throat> any other type of file and into here, and we'll start working with that. Um, well, let's do the uh, the simple way first, which is we'll take and do the standard uh, bit trace. 
So now that we did that, I'm going to go ahead and okay, close and uh, make sure I still, yeah. So here's the bit trace, and I will turn off the bitmap layer so we can see the logo itself here. Now, what I want to attempt to do with this is make it a little bit three dimensional. And uh, let's see here. I'm going to reduce it a little in size because another thing that I wanted to do is create a border around it. And uh, I will do that in the following way. First of all, we're going to separate, ungroup the objects. <clears throat> and we're going to take this layer right here and do the usual offset that we do. We're going to go out, outwards and say, um, I don't know, have a nice half-inch border around it. Let's try that and see how that looks. Boy, that's really ugly over here, as you can see, which means I'm going to undo that and uh, make sure the... Uh, make sure this is clean to begin with. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and create a new uh, badge, if you will, by doing the following. I'm going to take the number of points. Let me see. What do we got here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11, 10, 11 times 4. It's probably like a 50 point, something like that. 50 point, the inner radius, the outer radius is going to be about 11. Again, I am estimating here. The inner radius is going to be, let's make it 10%. We'll try that. Oh, that's horrible. It's the other way around. Undo that. Um, by the way, the center point is going to be 6-6, six, six, so let's try this at 90%. And now where did it go? Oh, look at that. It's huge. What did I, Oh, no wonder. For those of you paying attention, the radius is 5.5, which would be half of the diameter, which is what I assumed it was asking me for. So now, that's pretty close, but it's still not perfect. I mean, uh, if we wanted to recreate it exactly as is, let's see. Let me undo this, and let's try 48 points. Eight. Okay, it looks like to be... Needs more points. Undo. Let's try... 60 point. Way too tight. 40 point. That's about right. But not quite. 55 point. Did you count them, Steve? Is it 55? No, I haven't counted them. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did not count them, by the way. Uh, let's try 55. Let's see. Let's try, let's try counting. Hang on a second. Let me do this the easy way here. And that is one in the center, roughly one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's about 40 point. It's going to be an odd number because your points don't you don't have a, a up point at this op directly opposite the thing so it'll be an odd number point I'll just go ahead and use my artistic license and uh and make it nice and even there now we got to see which one is the original well, clearly this is not the original because it's all goofy looking and just to test to see if it's uh, actually 40 point or not which 
it may well be. I'm just going to adjust this a bit and rotate it a bit. That's not rotate. This is. And Patrick is in the house. Hey, Pat, how goes it? Let's try one degree. Let's try another degree. Well, look at that. It looks like it's 40 points. Hmm. Okay, now we can get rid of that original one. Take all of this piece, including those, and center that. Group it first, and then we center. And we shall likewise center this piece. And for aesthetic reasons, let's move this up a bit. Got a duplicate here. Now we'll do what we were going to do the first time, which is create that offset. Half an inch is good. That's eh, a little too much. Points are really tight. So let's go quarter inch, and we're going to make a little border that's a quarter inch. Jeff Connor joined us. Hey, Jeff, how are you? All right, so what we'll do now is let's do a few things here. First of all, let's get rid of this inside. There we go. Ungroup. We'll get rid of this. Oh, that's still grouped. And Drew has joined the panel. Hey, Drew, how are you? Jeff, good to see you. What's up? Right. What's up? Does it matter if I'm on here right now in the dark? It, you're, you're welcome to be on here, Drew. No, no one was in the other one. <laughs> Well, you're live on the screen. Too bad no one can see me. Can you see me now? <laughs> no, no, I've got it on. Uh, I've got it on my. Uh, oh, okay. My end. So don't worry. You could be in your pajamas. <laughs> gotcha. Although I wouldn't recommend it. Let's see here. Okay, I ungrouped the objects. Oh, yeah. How many times am I? Let me see. Wait a second. There's something here. Ah, gotcha. Okay. We're going to have to do a little bit of uh, creative uh, fiddling with this one because uh, do some node editing. What I want to do is I want to create this piece of this M, this piece of this M, and this piece. In fact, I may even join them all together and make one bulbous M but I actually prefer to do three pieces because it looks better that way with a clear separation. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, make uh, simplify these lines with a bunch of bezier curves. Robert's and, in the chat. All right. So now that we simplified that, let me simplify the others as well. Is there, is there any way for me to see, it, see the chat while being on it on a phone or no? Um, not on the phone, Drew. Okay. No, you'd have to, well, you'd have to be, I, I think you can, there's a button. No, because you're on the hangout link. So, okay, uh, gotcha. so it's different. Okay. Okay. And, uh, what was I doing this? Simplify and okay. Okay. So we, oh, that was horrible. I'm not simplifying that one. Well, yeah, why not? I can fix that later. All right. So as you see, we've simplified it, but I'm going to do a little bit of uh, it's a little too simple. I'm going to take the nodes and fiddle around with them a bit.
getting rid of some of these lines. By the way, for those of you uh, watching, here's what I'm doing. I am, I hover over the lines, and uh, a fast way to do this is if you see a curve, if you see something like this, which is a straight curve, uh, I will take, put my cursor over the line and hit the S button, which the S is smooth point. But if the point is already smooth, it will unsmooth the point. In other words, make it a... But you immediately have to choose one of the handles and there you go and now it's not smooth anymore it's it's at a 90 degree angle of sorts well it's at whatever angle you choose to put it and i'm going to do one of these this one's too long uh working with with curves uh, takes a bit of uh practice so i highly recommend anybody that's interested in in uh, working with uh with these types of uh curves to practice 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 let's see here oops there we go and i is insert a point so i'll go over here and i'll just click i and i just inserted a point Again, I'll click S and straighten it out. Or rather, take off the smooth. Let's see here. D is delete. So I delete that. I delete this and I delete this. And I should have a relatively... Let me see here. Let's see what the original looks like by putting it back. And I am going to uh, yes, I also have to align it because it is off. Tough logo. And why is it not letting me click on it? Because I'm not in the right object. There we go. All right. So I'm going to, yeah, see, we we moved the logo a bit. So I'm now I'm going to just uh, reposition the other one. Okay. Let me, let me do it a different way, which is I'll put a ruler... Where's my ruler? There we go. I'll grab a ruler, put it on the top of the inside, which is what I'm going by. I'll put another one here on this point. Put another one on the left. And another one on the right. Now I have the border of my uh, proud members. So now I can take the original, move it to one corner, and adjust to the other corner it's going to be off by a bit and i want to align the m i moved it down originally so i'm just working on the m right now now go back to the bitmap layer and mess around with that m I want to give it a little more separation. Let 
this one. I want to follow this, but go way out here. I need another point. And Okay, so I've created that curve. Now let me go to this one. That aligned pretty well. Okay, now let's get rid of this point. Goodness gracious. Delete that point, delete that point. And delete that point. Oh, undo that. Yeah, well, that works. All right. That M should be out over here. Sometimes it's faster just to uh, click on them rather than redoing a uh, sometimes you'll find it's faster to redo a whole item by going click 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 rather than what i'm doing which is adjusting the uh, uh, uh a shape neil shafto says just a thought can you move makers media network into the offset you created to see how it looks we will need some changes to get the correct spacing but is it possible Can I, okay, uh, the question again was, can I move Media Makers Network into the offset? Hang on, let me. Uh, I'm assuming he means the overlaid words. Yeah, the overlaid words are actually in the, um, I'm actually, uh, this, uh, it, it's, I'm actually doing a, one second, boom. Yeah, this would look better straight. So let's uh, get rid of this. The Makers Media, this this whole thing is off because we repositioned this with the star, Starburst. But um, right now... I mean, uh, here's how it would look. As it is, as it stands now, I've only worked on this this one here, and gone around the A. I still gotta neaten that up a little, and I'm start and I'm working on this middle piece. I want one, two, three pieces, and it will be one big. In fact, I don't want this piece either, or this piece. I basically want three large pieces let me uh get rid of this get rid of this and the rest i'll tweak but i am i want one two three big pieces that after i apply a uh, curve to them uh, after i apply a, a 3d image this will bulge out and uh, the proud member and the Makers Media Network, uh, I'll just have a straight uh, 
Now we'll figure out what to do with them. So what we're going to do is this section here, this middle section is going to be pocketed. This section here, this part, this part, and this part of the of the M will will pop out in a sort of a bubble shape or a button shape. And uh, the proud member of the Makers Media Network will also come out somehow. But we haven't quite decided. Excuse the jitteriness. My mouse is extremely sensitive, as those of you who have seen the show before know. All right, so let's move this over here for now. This over here for now. And let's see what else we got. Okay, that's no good. There are many things that can be done with a CNC. Some of them very, very simple. Most people will choose the simple path. And, uh, and that's all well and good. You can make simple signs with them, simple 2D images. But if you want to do something fancy schmancy like, like this, or uh, just uh, the same goes for this as, as it does for a 3D printer, you have to invest the time into... Um, into learning the program and the ins and outs, and you have to invest the, uh, well, frankly, the, the time in creating the image. I mean, there are shortcuts. Uh, you could uh, just use a simple auto trace. But then you wouldn't get the 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 effect that we're shooting for. Here. Let's see what do we got this mess here. Okay, and let's get rid of that. Put that there. Let's make this here. Are there any questions while I'm doing the... Uh, Nobody has come up with any here? sense. Or at least none have come across my chat. Okie doke. All right, so... We'll tweak it in a second. But uh, for now, we've got the three main pieces. Yeah, let's clear this part up a bit Dylan's Woodworks says hello hey Dylan how are you so we have here the beginning of Akers Media Network okay so let's just do a bit of uh Constructive uh, tool pathing. All right. So, first thing we want to do is we want to create a pocket around everything except the outside. Let's see. Pocket in there, pocket in there. Uh, let's see how that would look. Sometimes it's not worth, you know, banging your head and trying to figure out what, what something will look like when this has a perfectly good uh, um, tool to see that. <coughs> so as you see, it created the pocket 
the initial pocket, and that's great because we're eventually we're going to V carve these things. But uh, this is the one that I'm concerned with is the M. And let me do a couple things here. First of all, the thing that I chose is way too it's it's not deep enough. Let's do a three quarter inch panel. And let's go with a, hey, John, how are you? Let's go with a half inch depth for the pocket. And we'll use a, just for the sake of argument here, just so it looks better, we'll use a half inch. And uh, use larger clearance tool. We'll use a half inch for the larger clearance tool. There we go. That's a little faster. Reset preview, preview all tool paths. Okay. So we have our proud member logo or the beginnings of one. And now what we got to do is we have to see to bubble the, uh, this thing here. Let's choose this effect. Ah, let's try it on all of it, see what it looks like. Alrighty. We go to our modeling toolpath and we do something as simple as create shape from vectors. And we're going to create a nice little profile shape. The height will be uh, okay. Let's apply that. Now, one of the things we can do, let's see, close, uh, is the following. We hit this button here so I can see both of them side by side. Now, this is only to show you what the uh, what the, looks like a couple of muscles. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, I may have to cut this part off a little. But if we... Muscle man. If we do the... Uh, close this off. If we do... Now, we'll go back the and tool the path we just did. We'll do a finishing tool path with the uh, 128th ball nose. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so we've done everything here that we can do. Let's see what it looks like. And this is roughly, roughly, I say, what we want. We, we still need to tweak a little bit. I would probably prefer to do this in a... Uh, with either a smaller bit uh, or with a V bit. But uh, this definitely needs to be offset. So this 3D finished toolpath, oh, the offset is incorrect. Uh, Herb says hi. Hey, Herb, how are you? Let's try with a zero offset and see what happens. Reset and preview all. And uh, that's even uh, worse, I would say. Okay, what did we use? We used a 125 inch. So 0.0625 is correct. Well, I do have a smaller bit, so let's hmm. uh, select the smaller bit. John says, where could you have gotten that uh, cool design? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well... Um, this cool design, John, there are, there's a couple of secrets to it that I'll share with you if Steve doesn't mind. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hang on. Let me uh, do a quick, uh, I uh, got to duplicate this. Okay. Copy, create a new ball nose and we'll call it because I actually do have a, a 16th inch ball nose. Uh, 16th is what, 0.0625? Uh, 
something like that. I can't do math that fast today. Uh, let's see. And the mm -hmm. diameter is 0. 0.0625. So let's mm -hmm. calculate it with that one and see what happens. Might be a bit better, but it'll take forever. Right, so, yeah, see these these things look horrible. I'm gonna we're gonna eliminate those and just do the the path around this. But for now, uh, let me explain the the Makers Media Network logo here. Uh, Steve came at me with uh, with uh, I mean we we. When, when we all formed the Makers Media Network, we needed a logo. And it kind of started, there's a, if you know a bit of the history of Makers Media Network, it kind of blossomed from, from uh, Harneo Media Group, So, but, but it's a separate thing. So we thought, well, what better than to use the Harneo Media logo in one shape or another? Now, the Harneo Media logo, uh, I don't know if I can... I can't pull it up, but search Harneo Media and, and you'll go to his website, you know, employ him to do your website, and then you'll know what his logo looks like. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it is basically, it, it's very similar to this. And uh, I, I, it was, uh, the, it, I believe the M terminates a little further down, et cetera, et cetera. Now, one thing that you may or may not have noticed is, if you turn this logo, let me see if I can spin this. If you turn this logo upside down, um, let me see. yeah, uh, the Harneo Media logo, which is goes all the way around the top. If you'll notice, this actually comes to a peak up here, and then this goes around. It is very similar to, but not identical to, Star Trek symbol. So, yes, that's where whatever uh, wonderful people got that from. Uh, the original designers of the Harneo Media logo. And so we just uh, did a little creative uh, jiggering with this. <laughs> now, the last thing I want to do... On this logo is I want to take and do a simple um, profile outside to the full depth. Calculate. And then this is what I was shooting for or something very similar to this as a final product. Steve asked me last week and I was, "Hey, uh, what do you say we I would love to see one I would love to see this in a in a CNC image and I go, "Yeah, I'll be happy to." And so this part, this this pocket needs a little more. And the letters clearly need to be tweaked. So let's work on the pocket. Uh why is that? Hmm. 3D finish. Zero starts. Close. Go back to the model. This component. Oh, no wonder. Okay. Shape height is half an inch. And Matt is here. How are you, Matt? Welcome, welcome. So basically, and
Let's reset all the tool paths, see if that works any better. Matt wants to know if you can ask an unrelated CNC question. Go right ahead, Matt. Every CNC question is is uh, fair game. <coughs> well, let's see. I would dump that bottom leg off the. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely dumping the, yeah. the bottom leg off. That's a great idea. Let's let's get rid of that. Let me go back to the. There we go. And let's see here. Delete component. Let's fix that bottom leg. Ah, this mouse. Sensitive, sensitive, sensitive. There we go. Boom. Jim uh, Dockrell's here. Hey, Jim, how are you? Let's see here. Do. There we go. And smooth that out a little. No, that's got to be up here. Jim said he's doing good. He just saw you alive and decided to add to your analytics. <laughs> Well, Andy. I appreciate that, Jim. And to give right. you a thumbs up. All right, so here we go. Let's do this again. Let's. This time we're going to just choose these three. As soon as I finish this, go back to the drawing tab, choose this, go to the modeling tab, component. The angle is good. The base height is going to be... Correct. Okay. That's a question that just came in. Yes. V, v bits. If carving a circle with a V bit, you can precisely control the size of the circle on the surface. He gets that part. However, can you also pre precisely predict the size at the bottom? Uh, yes, you can. Um, all right. Let's, let me pause here for a second. Um. All right, uh, you have a V-bit. Uh, if I understand your question correctly, you're trying to, you know, obviously you know the size of the circle. Let's say you have a circle. You need a bigger circle. Let's say you have a circle. And you have, uh, let's say the outer edge of this circle is 10 inches. Clearly, you can, you know what the, uh, exterior of the circle is. Uh, it's going to be 10 inches. You put the V-bit on. Now, in order to calculate the sent the inside of the circle, there's a few ways to do it. Number one is, and all of them unfortunately involve math uh, for the most part. One of the ways is, like let's say in this case, if this was a V-groove, but clearly this piece is, you're not going to do a 90 degree cut all the way down here because you'll have a big hole in the middle. So you have a flat depth that you stop at. So one option is with your V-groove bit, if you have a flat depth, let's say the flat depth is at one inch, for example. And it's a 45 degree V groove. 45 is one to one. That it's you know Pythagorean theorem. 45 is one to one. So if you go one inch deep down, you're going one inch in. Okay. So let's say your circle is uh what is that about half an inch? Uh half an inch 
uh, in diameter, and you use the V grip, the V groove. Well, clearly, if you have a half inch or more thick piece of material, you're going to come down to a point. Um, if you have a if if you have a quarter inch piece, well, if if you decide that you only wanted a quarter inch, uh, deep flat depth, and you're using a forty five degree, uh, sorry, a ninety degree V bit. Did I say forty five? I meant ninety. A ninety degree V bit, which is forty five on each side. Then you're looking at again one to one, so half inch, uh, sorry, quarter inch down you're going and quarter inch in if the circle is half an inch quarter inch in quarter inch in well quarter inch doesn't make any sense let's say 0.2 inches you're going to go 0.2 in 0.2 in on either side your interior circle is going to be 0 0.2 0 0.2 uh so that's 0.4 total in diameter uh and take that subtract that from your half an inch so your inner circle will be 0.1 that's one way to calculate it i'm not sure if that answers your question was that he needs a, cham a chamfered hole mm -hmm. circle hole with the inner edge precisely line lining up okay you need a chamfered hole with the inner edge lining up gotcha there you'll have to do something uh you'll have to do one of two things um what I would suggest is, let's say this was your chamfered hole. You want the inner edge lining up. And let's say it's half an inch deep. Use a V-groove bit on the line. So you're not doing inside or outside. Use a V-groove bit and do a, do a profile cut on the line half an inch deep. So that V-groove will cut just one v groove one canal if you will all the way around in addition to that pocket out inside the line so this half will be chamfered this half will be erased by the pocket i don't know if you understood uh that if if that was uh, uh jim dockrell actually gave of any help decode for an m5 I'm assuming it's an M5, uh, M5 uh, screw, but I'm not sure. You said now that oh, okay. Let's see. That was that was something Jim said. Awesome said. Uh, my Matt says he's got it. He thinks he's got it. Okay. Um, let's see. You need a chamfered hole, circle hole with the inner edge precisely lined up. Yeah. So so the best way to do it is is the. Uh, is that way now uh, another way to do it which sometimes i i do is pocket it to whatever you, you have you need so you have the pocketed hole chamfer on top it doesn't have to go all the way down because that that going that deep you may that point may actually take off a little bit if you if you don't mind it being a straight wall and then a little chamfer and then straight then chamfer it halfway down you know uh, up to the pocket i mean there's you know many paths lead to room many ways to do it but uh let's see um i guess uh hopefully that's it i mean if if any other tips any other examples uh let me know and I'll, uh, let me continue on this uh little path here and Drew said he got kicked out by his wife calling, so he's that's why he's not in the hangout. He's in the chat. <laughs> Drew got kicked out. <laughs> Jake Thompson has come to visit. Hey, John. Hey, Jake. Hey, Jake. How are you? All right. So let's go back to a. Hey, what happened to our component? Okay. Ah, yes, that's what happened. I never created it. All right. Fly. All right, so then we do. <laughs> By the way, keep this hobby because I want to. I want to make a few tweaks to it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We'll be uh, we'll be fiddling with it uh, 
So let me see. Now we did that's the 3D finish. I'll get rid of that one. I'll create a new 3D finish. Calculate. And this time. Matt said, me, awesome. Thank you again. You're the man. Delete this. Move this up. And um, yeah. And let's do this with a. No, that's good like that. All right. So, uh, Michael, let's Michael see Chipster's what happens. Michael here and asking what Makers Media Network is. Hey, Michael. Uh, well, uh, if you want to know what Makers Media Network is, uh, go to makersmedianetwork.com or uh, sometime when you get a chance, ask Mr. Steve Nealon. But Makers Media Network is a group of like-minded makers who exist to help each other to promote each other to share knowledge to ask knowledge you know whatever the case may be everything from hanging out on a nightly basis which we all do to uh, um solving the toughest of life's problems well of woodworking problems anyways life problems get thrown in every now and then too Okay, did I recalculate? No, I did not. Give me a second. Just want to make sure I recalculate all the paths. That is a that is a tip that I will continually share with everybody. Anybody that's been to any of my shows, always recalculate, recalculate, recalculate. Because um, well, just the other day, I've, I don't care how much experience you have and how many years you've been doing this. Just the other day, I was making my, uh, drag chains and I moved a bunch of the drag chains over and had them on five different layers. I did not choose one of the layers. So it ended up that, uh, one of the layers was off from the rest and, uh, yeah, serves me right. MMN, MMN is actually a fringe radical group planning on taking over the world with Nerf guns. <laughs> yeah. Cute. Let's see. Okay. Now let's do the... Let's do a little bit of the... Close. Let's try... Let's try to goof around here with the... The proud member stuff. Get rid of this, that, that. I want these and this. So I chose those. I don't want these. And let's see what we can do with a prism carving toolpath for those of you that uh, may or not be paying attention. Uh, <coughs> and uh, and Mr. Yeah. Mark shows up. Calculate now. Reset preview. Preview all tool pass. Bam, bam, bam. And let's see how it looks. It looks nice, but it should be a little bit taller. The uh, the prism carve. Let's see. Let's set a depth of only quarter inch say hi to mark <laughs> hey mark how's it going welcome welcome calculate all bring my profile down to the bottom yeah 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 okay already and so this is what we're doing today We'll do a few tweaks. We'll make the letters fatter. Uh, I'll do that on. Uh, I'm going to end here for the for for the night. Uh, I'll I'll make the uh, letters fatter. I like I like the 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 fact that they pop up, and uh, as you see, they have a straight uh, thing, and then they're prism. So that looks really nice. This here needs a little bit of extra space, and I will probably take the three D carving and. Uh, 
I'll I'll have to redo it. Uh, so the component is say mm, half the height, something like that. That might work a little better. Close, recalculate all tool paths. Let's see what happens now. But I will. Uh, oh shoot! I forgot to reset the preview. There we go. I will probably do something like uh, give it a few uh, extra space, uh, give it some more extra, uh, for more space in between the letters. We might want to pop this out some more. But all in all, it's a nice looking logo. And there. As they say, you go. Thank you all for watching. And um, let's see. I think everyone should get one while we, while you still have some available. And yeah. what were we referring to? Uh, Michael Chipser's laptops. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Michael, I meant to ask you a question about your laptops. They wouldn't happen to have, uh, I know they're they're pretty old, but uh, they wouldn't happen to have uh, Bluetooth, would they? Just kind of curious. <laughs> Fringe radical group. Got to love it. And thank you all once again for, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, but they have open ports. I like that. He said he can, <laughs> add, he can add one, in other words. Yeah, yeah. No, I got that. But it's it's funny, the way the way he said it, it sounded it sounded funny. He goes, well, uh, they don't have Bluetooth, but they have a bunch of security issues. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I know you were talking about open physical ports as opposed to open uh, uh HTML. I mean, uh, oh God, my mind went blank. Bluetooth. The other ports. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So, anyways, uh, I bid you all a fond adieu. Thank you. Oh, let me uh, switch off the screen here. And thank you all for coming. I bid you a fond farewell until next week. When next week. We are going to take on Steve Twidell's challenge. We are going to CNC a banana. And I will show you how CNCing a banana is much easier than laving a banana, turning a banana. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, you know, if you turn a real banana, I guess it's pretty simple. Turning on the lathe, a banana. <laughs> Good night, all. Have a wonderful day and uh, look forward to seeing you next week for our special banana challenge episode. Anyone who wants to join in, I'm pretty sure Steve Twidell has a blanket challenge invitation to any CNC -er, uh, along with um, a disgust of the process, which, you know, those snobby turners of which I'm also one. Well, I turned one once. I turned something once. I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did. I'll say I did, whether I did or not. Have a great day, guys. <laughs>